Happy New Year and uh, welcome back to the legislative session. I want to give you a quick preview on a couple of bills I've introduced this week and so welcome to the Senate chamber and you're probably wondering why I'm wearing this fantastic uh, coat and you'll have to stay till the end of the video and I'll tell you the story about that. But I want to talk about three bills that we are introducing that I introduced this week. But the first one is introduced uh, a bill that will create this year a third category of tuition that we called standard tuition. Uh, to make sure that all undocumented kids in the state who want to be able to go to college will have access to college. We tried this bill last year, we passed it out of the Senate for the first time in history, but we died in the House, and so we're back with a new version this year which will create this third category of tuition. Uh, students will have to pay more, substantially more than in-state students, but less than out-of-state students, which makes it possible for these students to get access to college still. We also, a change in this year's bill is that uh, it will be optional for universities whether or not they choose to offer this third category, so we're trying to allow universities to have some choice in the matter, uh, but to make sure that all students have access to, if not in-state tuition, a third category of standard rate tuition. So that's our first bill. That's going to be Senate Bill 15. We still call it the Colorado Asset Bill. The second bill uh, is a bill that is about uh, uh, voter status and the creation of what is currently an inactive voter status category, which is currently if you miss an election you forget to vote, the state puts you into a category called an inactive voter, which means actually you have additional burdens to face in voting in the future, including if you're a vote by mail person, you no longer get your ballot in the mail anymore. And so we have two problems here. One is people who have missed the chance to vote, I don't think should have any increased burden to vote the next time. And the second is that we had a number of people who, almost 300,000 people across the state, who had chosen to vote by mail permanently, whether they're elderly or low income or don't have the means to get out of their house, they choose to vote by mail. And this bumped them all off of that list, so now they won't get any ballots and won't know why they didn't get them. So I think we have a significant risk of people who are voting before not getting to vote here, and so happy to be co-sponsoring with Representative Forum in the House, uh, a bill to help restore the, these people's permanent vote by mail status and to eliminate this idea that if you don't vote you somehow are punished by the state for it. Then the third bill that's introduced this week, as many of you probably know, know about and followed, our Great Teachers and Leaders Bill, which was passed two years ago, Senate Bill 191. That called for a process of a state council made up of teachers and principals and parents uh, and students to design some rules for how this would be implemented, including the evaluation and the measurements for growth of teachers and principals. So over the past year and a half, the, that committee has met, the state board has passed rules that came out unanimously, and now we have a bill to come and confirm those rules. And so uh, we are honored that the House actually made that House Bill 1 as a sign of its importance this year. So I'm honored to be co-sponsoring with Car Representative Carol Murray uh, again in the House, and then uh, Senator Spence and I will be co-sponsoring the Senate. We're delighted that this actually came out of its first committee, the Legal Services Committee, with a 10 to 0 unanimous vote, and all 10 of those senators and representatives signed on as co-sponsors. So uh, we now have 10 co-sponsors on the bill already, and this idea has an even uh, broader and deeper coalition of support now than it did two years ago when we passed it. So I think a very positive step in the right direction. And now to the most important story of the day, which is why am I wearing this fantastic coat? Uh, well, this coat actually belonged to my Uncle Jack, uh, Uncle Jack Johnston from Oklahoma City. And uh, this past week, my Aunt Patty Johnston passed away, which you would think would be uh, a real tragedy in the family, which it is. But Patty was such a relentlessly happy person that turned into a fantastic family celebration. We went, and one of my, my cousins, Josh, pulled all of these old coats of Uncle Jack's out of the closet and had all of the cousins wear these to, to the funeral. And so walked in to see a room full of color. And uh, Aunt Patty was a person who loved politics, but she loved people even more. She was an unconventional thinker and an unconditional lover. And I think that I wear this in the Senate today to remind me that politics is ultimately about people. What can we do to help make people's lives a little bit brighter? Uh, the way that Aunt Patty makes, made my life and our family's life a whole lot brighter. And so my hope is that uh, these three bills will do that for people across the state and will do some small part uh, to honor the great legacy of my Aunt Patty. So I wear this coat for her. Thanks for tuning in and we'll look forward to seeing you on next update in two weeks.